Hi there, I wanted to share with you a slide that I use with my students because I think it'd be useful in helping you improve your um, sales, your revenue. Um, so when I talk to my students about uh, overcoming a problem, so they often go off and do consultancy work for clients in the summer. This is the uh, general approach that I give them. Um, so what is the problem? Where is the problem? Why does it exist? What are the solutions? What's the best solution and how to execute the solution? It's fairly standard consulting fare. And with each one of those, I ask them to do a bit of research, a bit of structuring, um, a bit of hypothesizing, um, to collect data. Now, all of this isn't, isn't particularly interesting to you. Um, the key thing is kind of creating hypotheses and, and structuring um, potential problems and potential solutions. Now, I get um, a hell of a lot of consultancies that come to me focus on the question quite rightly um, uh, you know, on the challenge of low sales um, or want to increase their sales, especially if they want to grow the company towards some form of equity event in the future. Um, and, you know, very often the answer that is given by most people is on marketing so you know you need to do more on social media or you need to publish more or where's your blog or you know you need to get your tagging right and all the rest of this and the key key thing i want to get across here is that that doesn't take a structured approach to understanding the problem if you want to take a structured approach to understanding the problem then you need to think about the potent you know sort of hypothesize if you like uh, about the or have ideas in, in a less posh way of saying it um, ideas of why you know the sales might be low and if you think about it logically in a may see means mutually, mutually exclusive collectively exhaustive so if you think about the potential causes of this problem marketing could be one sales could be one and part of sales that can be decomposed further so it might be your proposals it might be the quality of your conversations it might be that you're targeting the wrong group it could be your pricing so think structurally about the different causes of those. So I would always, I always start right at the beginning, which is, you know, think, think about what you're doing. And I've, I've posted about this before, but, um, you know, are you in a niche where there, where there is sufficient demand? If you are in a niche where there is sufficient demand, then is there too much competition? Um, if there isn't too much competition, um, you know, perhaps then the problem might be with marketing. Um, and by marketing, I also include positioning uh, there. So, you know, once you move on to the marketing, um, you know, break break that down. So, you know, in terms of the audience, are you uh, targeting the right audience? Are you using the right channels? Are you using the right messaging? Messaging is absolutely crucial to get right. If your marketing is fine, then look at your sales, look at, you know, the each stage of the pipeline and your conversion of each stage of the pipeline. Um, look at the way in which you, you write proposals, look at your pricing. Um, if all of those things are fine, then perhaps it's something else. So my point here is not just that you need to structure the problem of low sales, but that you also need to structure it and then test by researching. So, you know, with each one of those questions I asked, you need to do a bit of research. You just can't do it in your own head. So you need to go out and, so when we're talking about the market, you know, how much competition is there? And don't just, you know, name the competition you know. Ask your clients um, what's their pricing like? What's their unique selling point? What do you do that they don't? If it's not the market, then we look at marketing. You know, who engages? Who sees your messages? Um, who who responds to your messages? Um, what are you doing? And what aren't you doing? So you, you break that down, and then if it's you know you get data on that. The great thing is with marketing, you can you can track the data these days. If you're not tracking the data, then you can't possibly know what the problem is. Then then if that's not the problem, then go on to sales. Now very often when I'm dealing with consultancies, there's quite a few problems, but you need to then prioritize them. So, you know, it might be it might be a bit around marketing, perhaps it's pricing, perhaps you find that your pricing is in, insufficient or it's too low or it's, you know, you could uh, add advantage to yourself by offering a different type of pricing. Um, so it might be that 
Um, your marketing might generally be fine, but your LinkedIn work isn't particularly uh, good or automated or um, followed up on. So it might be a bit of LinkedIn. And then when it gets to sales, you know, your sales process might be great, um, but you might get an expert to, you know, to have a look at, at the systems and you find that your proposal writing isn't particularly good. So then you've got a whole set of um, contributors to low sales. Then you prioritize them. Um, in terms of impact, but also in terms of the amount of work you have to do in order to in order to uh, solve the problem, um, and also the cost of of doing that. Um, then you create a plan, and then you go off and do it. So, I, you know, I could talk about this forever. This this lecture for my students takes a uh, takes half a day, um, but my point is is that number one. Think widely about why your sales aren't what you want them to be. Number two, decompose the problem. So even you know if you have a niche or strategy, whatever you want to call it, then you have marketing, then you have sales. Um, decompose that into the component parts, and then get data on it. Um, and this, I think, is where most consultancies fail. And I realize it takes a bit of work. But when I say data, I don't just mean, you know, asking your asking um, asking your clients and ex clients and those who have turned you down as clients. Um, you know, look at the literature. Um, what, what does it say? Um, speak to experts. Um, you know, what, what do they say? Look at case studies. Look at prize winners. Look at what everyone else is doing. So think quite widely about about um, your research. Anyway, um, I hope that was useful. I realize I went through it quite quickly, um, but any questions, drop me a line.